Okay, now, um, add a status label to the status strip. How do you do that? A status strip can contain one or more panels, for instance, a status label or progress bar. By default, it contains uh, zero panels, so we must add a status label. Click the Add Panel button and select Status Label. So what they mean is, go to here and click here and add a status label here. Okay, like that. Okay? And then next, um, give it the name of TSS Label 1 and the text property is ready. We click on here and give it a name of TSS Label 1. TSS Label 1. And the text is ready. Questions on this? Okay, right, let's go on. Okay, now add this code. Open the code editor for our form and add this code. Now, before you do it though, well, okay, go ahead and type it first and then we'll do it. So add this code. Sorry? It's written in the text editor.pd, right? Yes, just in the form. Okay, now this is about, I think about the fourth or fifth lecture where we've, where we've seen it, the use of a property. So just quickly to review. So a property has a get and a set method. Okay, and so what, um, what happens, where do we get the value for this status text from? Where do we get the status, the value of the status text from?
from here. What is this? What is this? What is this? This is the label that we had at the bottom of the screen. Okay, so we're re uh, we're 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 accessing that, and we and how how about this also has a set. So if we change status text, what are we actually changing? Here, this is what we're actually changing. Okay, so. Um, you, all right, so basically this status text, I might call it a kind of a wrapper. What do I mean by wrapper? Have you ever seen wrapping paper? What's wrapping paper? You put it around the present, right? You, you cover something with it, right? So this is a kind of a wrapper, a kind of a covering for TSS label one, dot text, okay? So you might say, well, why do we need to wrap it? up? Why don't we just access it directly? That's a good question, and I don't have a good answer. Uh, I actually asked Professor Rose why he did it this way, and he said, well, he wanted to introduce the students to the idea of properties, but that's not really not a great, that doesn't give us a good reason for it. Like, yeah, I mean, sometimes properties are good, but why did we have to use it here, right? Now, if you were, now, as I said, this is about the, uh, but he gave me another reason also. But anyway, this is about the fourth time that um, we use the use properties. Okay. So, do you, does anybody have it? Do you remember when we used it before? Anybody remember? Honestly, I don't remember. But I know we used it like four different times. So I don't remember the specific cases. But does anybody else remember? Okay, well one thing is I do remember that there was at least one case where when we set the property, we also had to do some other things as well. Okay, now that would be a clear reason for when or why to use properties. You set the property, but you have to do some other things as well, then yeah, it's, it's different than just, uh, you know, then I could say, then I'd say, yeah, there was an additional purpose in in creating the status text, or in creating a property, it does more than just change the uh, TSS label dot text. Okay, it does some extra things. So, in that sense, I, I could I could understand uh, using it. But here, uh, it's a it's a little bit confusing why we're using it right here. Okay, but generally speaking, it's kind of hiding this. Okay. So we might have made TSS label one private, for example. I don't think we did that, but we might have. Um, and then this would be kind of a public access to it. Okay, but anyway, I guess uh, one thing we can say is he's teaching you how to put things into properties, and then maybe in le in um, in programming two, the next course after this, you'll you'll be used to doing that. And maybe he'll explain some good reasons for why to do it in general. Okay, so at least you'll be used to doing it. Okay, all right, so anyway, oh, uh, so let's read what he says here. Um, status text, this property, allows coordinated control of the status bar. The get function returns a string, TSS labels text, right? The get function returns TSS label one dot text. Okay, the set subroutine sets TSS label one's text. Again, I would say, well, why do we need to encase this in a property? Why don't we just do it directly? Okay, but uh, it's, it's practice for making properties. Okay, he says also, make the property public. Okay, we did that over here. This allows later, okay, now this is important. This allows later access of the property from outside the form, if desired. For instance, the text editor class might be used 
as part of a bigger project. What does he mean by the text editor class? What does he mean by the text editor class? What does he mean by this, the text editor class? Yeah, where did you see anything called the text editor class? Yeah, the form itself is called text editor, right? And it says class before that, right? So that's the text editor class. It's the whole class for the program that we have. Okay? Does everyone get it? Okay? And what he's saying is this class or this text editor might be part of a bigger program. Okay? So if we make this property public, then from another part of the program, from another class, in other words, we can access this property. Okay, if you don't want another part of the program to be able to access this property, then you could make it private. Okay, is that clear? All right. Next one is this one. So start to do this. Add a tool strip with buttons. So go ahead and do this. Go ahead and get started. So you go down to again to the menus and toolbars. You find tool strip. You just drag it anywhere onto the screen. It will automatically appear up here. And then give it, and then it will also appear down here at the bottom. And give it the name tool strip one and dock equals top. Go ahead and start with that. equals tool strip one and dot equals top. Set those two properties. Okay, step two, make a new folder. So we never added a new folder to a program yet, but now we're going to create a folder where we're going to keep all the images. And that's going to keep our images kind of um, uh, accessible to the program. Okay, so step two, make a new folder. Add a new folder called images to the X text editor program. This folder will be used to hold the images in the tool strip. So what you do is uh, you um, right click on here on text editor in the solution explorer in this, on the right hand side. You right click here and then you should see add and then, uh, and then when you click add you should see new folder. Okay? And then give the name of that folder, call it images with a capital I I guess. Okay, can everyone get that? Call it images. Now, now you have to get these uh, images that I want to give you, and they are in our um, class folder. So let me find that. Show it to you. So you go to here, and you go to uh, report here. Instructional materials, and you find our class, which is under my name, here, W Plaster, and then you have to find the 
this one, 2014 programming. And then you'll find images and go into the images and you'll find these. You don't need this one, thumbs.dp, but you need the other ones. And what you want to do after you find that is you want to right click on your images folder icon in the Solution Explorer and it will uh, give you an option to find out where that folder is located. I believe. You right click on it. Um, it says uh, open this fol folder in File Explorer. Okay, so if you open it in File Explorer, then you'll know the location. And then, um, or actually you'll have it open. And then just copy these uh, pictures into here. Okay, so copy the pictures from uh, the report. What was that here? Wherever that was. Here it is. From here, 2014 programming images. Copy that into this folder, into your images folder. Okay? Uh, somebody raised their hand, somebody wanted some help. Okay, everyone get that? Okay, um, so he says various system images are in the Visual Studio 2012 image library, which can be downloaded from here. However, for simplicity, instead we will use a set of images in my lecture resources. So, we just got those. Okay, everyone okay with that? Okay, now we want to add buttons up here. So what you do is, you just right click on this arrow here, and you'll see button. And you add that button, and then we want to give it some properties and we want to uh, give it a, an image as well. So you just go up here to the, uh, your text editor and right click and add the button. So it'll look like this. And then go to step two here, select local resource on the select resource dialog. All you have to do is right click on this button actually. If you just right click on that button, um, it, you'll see set image I believe. Right, everyone get that? Okay, we right click on this button here and it'll say something about setting the image and then you uh, will bring up this dialog box and you'll click um, import and you'll find the, this image here called new.bmp and you'll uh, open it and then press OK here and that should set the image for the first button. Anybody have any trouble with that? And then when, after you've done that, set the button's properties like this. Name, TBR, clear. Dis display style, image. Text is nothing. Okay? Never get that? So now you should have your first button on the uh, tool strip. So that strip at the top is called a tool strip. Okay? Can we go on? TBR clear is the name. Okay, let's go to the next <coughs> slide. Do we want to put clear on the text? Is that okay also? Sorry? Do we want to uh, put the explanation? No, text? don't don't change the text. Just leave it. Just leave the text empty. There's no room for it. Okay. Let's go on. Okay, now you have to do this for the five for five more buttons. <laughs> 
Okay, so you want to uh, add a new button, give it a name TBI red, image, you want to use the color underscore red BMP for that image, and the text tooltip, you want to set it to make text red. And then you want to do the third button, the name is TBR blue, and it tells you which image to use, and it tells you a tooltip text to use as well. So do that for all of these so that you're going to have a total of six buttons in the text editor.